Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of GG. Um, due to the you know, whole coronavirus and all this crazy stuff going on, we don't have, I don't have anybody over this week. Um, but over the, uh, the internet on the phone call, I have uh, Donald um, to talk about what has, what we feel is one of the biggest revolutions or something that's changed the video game industry and that became the norm or that was a huge you know, change that could have been something great. How are you doing, Donald? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? How's it going? I'm doing good. I just don't like this uh, <laughs> this whole quarantine lockdown kind of thing. So it's, it's no, done. I know. <laughs> uh, my, uh, I made a um, music parody for my channel based off of uh, the coronavirus, talking about how much I hate being alone and I isolating myself. <laughs> like, well, hopefully it won't great. be too much longer. If people, I'll send you the link. You can put it in the description of this video if you want. Okay. I'll do it. Well, we'll <laughs> but hopefully, there. like I said, it won't, yeah. it won't be too much longer. Um, so before I say what you know, I think is you know one of the bigger changes that has changed in the video game industry. Tell me your opinion on what you think that you know was put into the video game industry and then changed drastically. Well, I don't know. That's a that's a big question, man. I've been gaming for like three decades. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Chronologically, I think uh, the biggest ones were the introduction of FPSs with like Doom and like uh, uh, Wolfenstein. Um, oh, that's a huge then, one, though. Huge. Doom changed then, um, everything back in 1993. Oh yeah, yeah. Because uh, I mean, they even they introduced. Um, so they changed that. They made the FPS genre, which became the Doom clones. Then after that, they also made netcode so you could play multiplayer online. So that was like the very first people going um, PC to PC. That was going to be my next thing was the player. the online version of it, you know, and, uh, and like online gaming in general. Um, yeah. I got big into online gaming, but not typically FPSs. Um, I did uh, MMOs really um, from about the year two thousand three on. Um, yeah. Uh, starting with the like Dark Age of Camelot. I never played that one. There was a game uh, that was online. I can't remember what it was, and it was free to play, and it was a, an earlier one. And that was that was actually gonna be my third point was the uh, the introduction of free to play games, because <laughs> uh, that, that's that's kind of huge too. Like the um, getting rid of all the subscription base and then just buying what you want. And uh, EA is notorious for like loot boxes and stuff. But, I mean, like everything's yeah, well, like no basically free to play <laughs> nowadays, um, except for some of the older school games like World of Warcraft. But yeah. Um, so that is a good point, though. I mean, uh, <clears throat> Doom and id Software did speak. I mean, Doom just came out, but it, the the FPS genre was it is has literally not been the same since. And that's a good point because ever since then we have a billion Call of Duties, Fortnite. You know, then they became third person shooters, um, which led to like games like Gears of War and Resident Evil Four. There's there's been there's been quite a few and. That's, I mean, that's that's probably one of the bigger ones. I never thought about that in general. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I remember back, I mean, when I was growing up, those didn't exist, you know. And uh, <laughs> um, I started, my first one was Wolfenstein um, on the PC. Yeah. It was like a little two-dimensional freaking video game. And uh, I, I couldn't get enough of it. It was like I was addicted to it. <laughs> and then Doom oh, yeah. came well, out. Who doesn't and like killing Nazis? It kept going on. So... Um, so let me tell you which one I think I'll give you a good one and I'll give you a bad one. So the first one, the one I think is is the better one, is as I've stated in my other um, videos what I have with Albert is CD based games. So once we started moving to CD based games, you could hold more. Um, then you had compressed audio. Now you could have <clears throat> excuse me full motion video, and then. Yeah, and then we, we moved farther along, we get into the, the PS3 and Xbox 360, and then the PS3 goes with Blu-ray discs, which now are dual-layered. So now they can have even more uh, memory stored on them, and at a higher uh, quality. So that was, and like even today, it's it's still being used. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I remember, I remember playing uh, Final Fantasy VII on my PlayStation uh, 1, you know, and have, having the four discs to have to keep changing it out for the different chapters or whatever. It was only you know, three. Was it three? I could have sworn it was four. That's fine. Uh, anyway, way, you know what I mean. You know, I had to. You could only <laughs> just play part you, of man. the game on one disc, and then you had to swap it out, and then go to the next yeah. one, and go to the next one. And now, just games are huge nowadays on on yeah. the DVDs. Or, sorry, the Blu-rays. 
But so I feel like of even those are phasing out with the um, with the streaming and uh, yeah, digital um, digital downloads. Yeah, that's that's a big thing now. But with uh, Final Fantasy, as you said, though, they're doing basically what they did back in the day. This one that's coming out next month is actually going to be, I think they said, a two disc, two Blu-ray discs, and it's going to be like sixty plus hours long. So it's another retro throwback to. Um, you know, the Final Fantasy. So I was under the impression that it was only two discs because they have both versions on there. They have the original version uh, with the original graphics, and then they have the um, updated version with the newer graphics. Uh, I did not look into that, but I'm pretty sure yeah. it's, it's uh, because the original version is, you know, a couple megabytes, like, like 700, 800 megabytes, something like that. It's really small compared to mm -hmm. uh, what they made here. So is there any... Yeah, I, know, I know they're giving you both options to play both. Um, so you'll be able to go back and play the original graphics and everything. Um, with the I mean, new I, don't, one. I mean, I, if I'm going to do that, I might as well just play Final Fantasy VII instead of have some. Well, nice you probably still have your original game. PlayStation, don't you? <laughs> uh, I ha well, I got rid of it, but I have a PS3 that's backwards compatible. So if I really feel uh, like I Raj. want to, I can. Um, so, go is there any advancements that you feel that happened in the gaming industry that was a negative? Um. Besides when EA bought Bioware, um, <laughs> uh, <That> was, <laughs> well, EA is, EA is just known for destroying companies, regardless. And they've actually been doing yeah. that for a very long time. They actually started that trend, which is actually a negative trend, um, yeah. back in the Sega Genesis that, days. You know, so you uh, actually have the part point. that bothers me about that whole thing uh, is the fact that it doesn't matter what they do; everybody's gonna. Just not like it either way. Not um, no, no, because Doom just came out, right? And they are published by Bethesda, but they but it made the game. So and that game has got outstanding reviews, and the the pro, the Doom that came out before that got outstanding reviews as well. So the one um, that I bothers think, me the most is Battlefront Two, though. Um, oh yeah, well they that I mean, come game on. is they amazing. Took everything out of it, and everything was pay to play. Like they're using phone tactics for right. I get that, but. Um, the the point is like nobody gave it a chance, all right. And bef before they did that, like I played it from day one, and all the stuff that you could buy, you know, with the free pay to play with stuff or whatever, I had earned all that same stuff within like two or three weeks. Like you didn't have to pay for the stuff; you just c could if you wanted to. Yeah, the, I think um, the main thing is that people were upset. Like you have to spend seventy or eighty hours for one hero. Like that was the big thing. Like you'd have to grind forever to get one gem. It didn't take me that long. Yeah, well, well maybe I'm just a badass. Who knows? <laughs> Possibly. I didn't play the second one because the first one left a bad taste in my mouth. So. Yeah, the, the second one was great. I thought the campaign alone was worth the the money for it. Mm. I never played it because. Yeah, and again, I love like that said, the campaign it for it uh, is canon and it, it correlates with the new movies. Oh well, the last one was okay. Eight kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like eight. Um, yeah, we just don't have to discuss that. We're talking about video games. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a Star Wars fan. You know, I'm not oh, going to argue about that. I'm a Star that. Wars fan, and you know, everybody knows. That I think I'm a Star Wars fan. So, mm -hmm. um, but so let me give you a negative that I think has happened in the gaming industry that revolutionized in a very negative way, and one that you kind of already talked about was you know EA doing this and that, but um, uncommon practices that that just piss off gamers, such as you know. Uh, free to play games, but everything else is pay to play. Like you have to have all this other stuff. A lot of advertisement in games, which is really stupid. Or like what they did with Destiny, they'll put a, a full game on there, and the expansion packs are already on there. But you have to pay an extra forty dollars for an expansion for like three, right. four hours of gameplay. That right. is absolutely terrible, and that's becoming a huge thing. And I mean, Destiny's still doing that, um, and it's 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 absolutely ridiculous. It, it, I don't understand it at all. And that was the other thing about Battlefront 2, um, that EA said that, um, like, all the... As soon as you bought the game, like, all the expansions for it, all the DLCs, they were coming out free. Like, you didn't have to pay for any of them. And, like, nobody cared. I thought that was amazing that they were doing that. The reason they did that is because Disney got on them and said, look, you're going to get rid of everything you're doing right now, or we're going to make sure that, you know, you can never touch our stuff again. So they gave it out Which for free. I, well, that surprises me too, because Disney is notorious for being greedy. Oh, absolutely. But, 110%. But the Battlefront game was making Disney look bad. 
So they gave out everything for free, and then ironically, a few months down the road, they reverted it back to you, you have to pay. So, EA does have very negative common practices. They're, they're notorious for that. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. it is they destroyed my favorite game of all time, too. Which the, one was that? Old Republic. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh man. So the, the old, the first, the, the, the Old Republic games on the Xbox were, uh, they were great, I liked them. I'm not talking about Knights of the Old Republic. I'm talking about the oh, Old Republic on the, the oh, MMO. Just the Old Republic. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the Knights. I like the Knights of the Old Republic better. Oh, yeah. I mean, who doesn't? Some those, those are amazing. <laughs> <Some people. laughs> really? I've never yeah, met anybody. You'd be surprised. <laughs> so, anyway, Donald, uh, thank you for uh, having this short conversation with me. I really appreciated it. Um, and everybody else. Oh, yeah, see man. You. I, could, I could talk about this stuff for hours. <laughs> I'll have to bring you back then. All right. All right. I'll catch you guys later. All right, later, brother.